Hey people, uh, two things real quick before we get started. One, in case you didn't already notice from the last Rock Coliseum, um, yeah, I'm bald now. What'd it do? How you feeling? And two, I figured we could try something a little different for this review. Um, yeah, check that out. What do you think of this? Let me know what you think of this and maybe we can keep doing this. I don't know. I think it's cool. Heyo people, and welcome to this review of the second full-length album from Creeper, Sex, Death, and the Infinite Void. Yeah, this motherfucker had some hype behind it, didn't it? Like, damn. I mean, say whatever you want to about Creeper, they know how to get people excited for a new record. Even if it's only through sheer anxiety. Holy fuck, don't do that again. My poor heart. Yeah, remember that shit like last year when they threatened a full-blown breakup? Yeah, even when signs started popping up that that wasn't for realsies, it still threw the band's future in a serious bit of doubt, and either way, it signified that the old creeper that we got attached to was dead, and that they were going to be moving on to new things. But even still, you just, you kind of have to give them credit for having the brass balls to basically take the sound that everyone became attached to, and abandoning it just flat out to restart things fresh after only your first album cycle. Like, I don't know, that move signified that Creeper was not looking to be pigeonholed. They were looking to change and change they did. The first thing I gotta say about this new record, it's different. It's very different indeed. Different from what I was expecting, certainly. And after that last move, I had no fucking idea what to expect, so yeah. With this record and the preceding singles that came out, the band were practically threatening us that there wasn't gonna be any full-blown punk jams on this album, and to their credits, they did hold true to that threat. This album doesn't really have any of those high-speed jams like Black Rain or Suzanne from Eternity in Your Arms. It tends to lean harder into a mid-tempo groove and a more classic rock feeling sound. Honestly, if there's one term that describes this album, I would say it's that. This thing is classic rock. It's classic rock pastiches all the way down. The guitars, drums, and various pianos and synth tones all scream like late 50s, early 60s rock. It's way more inspired by the likes of Buddy Holly than Captain Sensible. This isn't like a full-blown Archie's record or anything. It's still got very dark and gothic sensibilities to it. It's just kind of a different flavor of darkness. Whereas Eternity in Your Arms was more of an operatic goth punk style a la My Chemical Romance and the like, this has more of a like dark macabre rockabilly kind of feel. It's desolate and lonely and haunted. It feels like the type of music that would pipe through heavy static in the radio of an old Chevy as it drives down an abandoned highway in the middle of the desert on a pitch black night. It honestly gives off vibes of the more melancholy stuff from the likes of, say, Chris Isaac, or maybe even Lyle Lovett, than it does, you know, the more just straight up punk rock edge of the previous album. It's punk rock still, but it's punk rock that you could feasibly see being played in a David Lynch film. If that makes any sense, I'll bet that sentence alone might have sold some of you on this just right away. I mean, that sounds like a really cool motif to explore, right? Yeah, and I can confirm. If that aesthetic sounds like something that would appeal to you, easy recommendation. Go for it. Like, this album is going for something that I haven't seen a lot of the punkier, sort of edgier acts attempt, and they pull it off surprisingly well. I'm genuinely impressed by that. If you want a dark punk vibe that is genuinely different, I say go for it. If you don't care about this band's past legacy, then this album won't present you with any challenges. It is a moody, 
melancholic, just lovely little piece of macabre, desolate mind warping. It is very pleasant. I do love it in that respect. If you don't have history with this band, you'll probably really enjoy this. If you do, though, uh... Whoo, see, that's probably where this album's biggest drawbacks lie. It's an album that really doesn't sound like anything else out there, but that includes Creeper's previous work, too. So, ooh, you see what I mean? Like, old fans, those of you that jumped in on this band on Eternity in Your Arms, I, I'm, I'm just gonna level with you. You will have to unlearn some of the things that album taught you. If you admired this band for their energy and their aggressive side, that, that's not really here. If you loved the epic sweeping choruses and bombastic melodrama of Eternity, well, those aren't entirely absent, but it is a much different flavor of melodrama. It's less Tarantino and more Tim Burton. Crossed with David Lynch. I don't know, this album gave me weird David Lynch vibe. It's still Creeper, make no mistake, but this is a very drastically different Creeper sound. And real talk, I just know that some of you who are already acquainted with this band are gonna have issues adjusting to this one. I get it. It was a weird listen my first time through as well. I'm not entirely bothered by the shift though, if I can be honest. I mean, to the band's credit, they did a fairly great job, well, almost great job, in communicating that changes were gonna be coming. And also, once I did readjust my mindset to accommodate for what this album was trying to do, when I separated my own expectations of what Creeper should sound like, and just let this album impress me on its own terms, there was a lot of stuff in this record that was genuinely worth admiring. There is still a lot about this album worth checking out, though I have to admit the fact that it's so distant from Eternity in Your Arms is a still a bit of a hurdle. Even though there's a lot about this album I admire and certainly respect, I uh, I can't genuinely honestly say it's better than Eternity in Your Arms. Eternity in Your Arms is a fucking bop, and that's still gonna be the first Creeper album I recommend anybody check out beforehand, but even for its different, weird little vibe, this thing certainly has its strong suits, and it's not one to ignore just because it's not Eternity in Your Arms Part 2, The Quickening. It can be so easy for bands of this specific goth-tinted, emo-adjacent punk vibe to get typecast into making one kind of sound. I'm looking at you, Alkaline Trio. As much as I love you, come on, admit it, it's true. And you know, I just... I have to admire the band for being bold enough to step outside the box and try something new. I can't say it was wholeheartedly successful in that respect, but it does show us that the band is capable of more than just 10,000 different variations on Hiding With Boys. It shows us that the band is more multifaceted than I think even fans would have given them credit for. It's still a very solid record, but you do have to approach it on its own terms. This is one to walk into with an open mind. That being said though, I say Sex, Death, and the Infinite Void is still good. It might just not be eternity in your arms good, and for those of you that just cannot accept anything from this band that isn't Black Rain, and eh, might not be your thing, but it's still worth checking out. I still had a lot of fun with this, and approach this one with an open mind, and I think you will too. Real talk. Sex, Death, and the Infinite Void gets four blue hotels out of five. Well, what did you think? Were you down with the different vibe Creeper was laying out here, or is it more infinite void than sex or death. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you like what you see, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're at it. In the meantime though, I'm Crash Thompson, and I'll see you in the next video.